the business community increasingly recognizes that our education system is failing us in terms of preparing the next generation of workforce to be college and career ready. Right? It's a workforce issue today. We have three million jobs today in this economy that are unfilled because we don't have the right skills of recent graduates and of those in the workforce. We know our education system is at a crisis. We know it's an economic issue that business feels. We also know it's a security issue. We know that 70% of recent graduates can't qualify for military service today because of academic performance, criminal record, or their physical fitness. 70%. We are not preparing the next generation. When we look at countries around the world, in Western Europe and Japan, we frankly are advantaged. When you actually look at their workforces, right, they have an aging population. They can struggle to be able to sustain their GDP growth because they're going to have to have substantial productivity gains just because they're going to have people leaving the workforce versus entering. The U.S., on a relative basis to those more mature economies, are in an advantage position because of our immigration policies, because of high birth rates, especially with some of our minority populations. We, in fact, are better positioned to sustain economic growth, but only if we educate that population. Or else this asset will be a wasted asset that will come liability when they drop out and draw on our social services and draw on our criminal justice system. So the choice is very clear and very stark, and the consequences are real. We have broad aspirations and a broad mandate on the one hand in terms of our mission, but our actual resources and our ability to directly influence the system is relatively limited. And so the federal government provides less than 10% on average for K-12 funding. The bulk of the federal resources has been on trying to preserve equality of educational access. And so as we say back, we say, well, how do we have leverage in that kind of system? How do you take the limited resources we have to have maximum impact? As we look at the scale of the problem, if you're going to drive systemic change, we're going to have to get leverage. Let me suggest th three specific opportunities for leverage for the business community at large. And I think they have implications for the corporate philanthropic community and the independent philanthropic community. So one, on this theme, imagine if 50% of the states in this country, 25 states, had legislations in place that would allow the kinds of reforms that we're seeing percolating around the country go to scale. Second goal, big challenges, frankly, there are not enough parents and consumers themselves of education, people who are actually going back to school, who really are informed consumers of education. We don't have parents and consumers who understand what a high quality education is. They've, be, they've dumbed down their expectations. They don't understand the impact of not having a high quality education. The likelihood that you're going to be unemployed is high. Your earnings have stagnated in the last 20 years. And so how do we educate consumers, parents, about the importance of education, but not just the importance, that can be theoretical, but what are the specific behaviors and actions that you can do as a parent, that you can do as your own lifelong learner going back to further your education? What can you do specifically to improve outcomes? About three and a half billion dollars uh, is invested in education on behalf of corporate philanthropy. Three and a half billion dollars. But as we go out and talk to many of you, quite frankly, we talk to the CEOs and other business leaders. When you say, well, are, how confident are we that we really are getting significant return on that investment? Right? Oftentimes we hear the giving is somewhat diffuse. Our ability to understand the impact it's having is somewhat limited. And while we're making incremental progress, admittedly, we're not sure we're on a path for dramatic change. And so I think our th my third challenge to this group would be to set a goal, to set a goal that 50% of your philanthropic giving will be what we call evidence-based. The benefit that that would have is one, over time, dollars would flow to things that are truly proven to be making a difference against a systemic problem. Two, the grantee population and the applicant population would understand the path of what do I need to do to better understand the impact and the effect my programs are having. So again, I ask you to think about those three goals. How could you work as part of a community to have 50% of the states adopt really reforms that would advance education in this country? How could you ensure 50% of the workforce and the organizations and, and your corporations that you are actively engaged in, 50% of your workforce truly are informed about what it means to be an engaged consumer of education? 
And how can you ensure that 50% of your gifts of the next year are against a set of evidence standards? Ideally, a set of protocols that are shared by the industry so that it brings efficiency, both external and internal. 